Absolutely. Let me take you to just step by Absolutely. step. Absolutely. The rule of the law. The rule of law says. Mm -hmm. The rule of law requires the police to investigate a matter, to when they have sufficient evidence, present that to the ODPP. The Director of Public Prosecutions takes people who are culpable to court. That's the journey in the rule of law, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. In the case of 39 people who have been abducted, and the abduction here, we're using it deliberately because of the manner in which the people have been arrested, like we've seen in the case of Alfred Kater, others who've been picked up from their houses in the middle of the night, and they are held in communicado for more than 24 hours outside of what the, the rule of law says. And then they are not taken to court, so they are not charged with anything. That is outside of the rule of law. So in one instance here we are saying we are not following the rule of law. In the second instance, Mr. President, you have people who were unarmed, like in the case of Rex, who was shot in the middle of the night, unarmed, who have been shot by police and they've ended up dead. 24 of them, you say 19. That again is extrajudicial because there is no justification that has been produced to show that there was justification for the police to use the excessive force. So basically we are showing examples where the rule of law, which you promised to uphold, which you also set and said, this is what the police has been doing. And you said, Mr. President, um, as, as you took office, that the problems with the police service also are going to the top, the leadership of the police service. And you promised the people of Kenya that you're going to hold the police to account outside of the rule of law and accountability, which comes to your desk. Are you holding the police accountable for 39 people abducted, for 24 people killed, for 627 people arrested and not charged, for 431 people injured by live bullets, rubber bullets, tear gas canisters, police batons? Uh, Latif. As I have told you, we must operate within the parameters of the rule of law. And I agree with you. The police must never act outside the framework of the rule of law. They must do that which only the Constitution and the law allows them to do. And it is very clear that any operation of the police outside the parameters of the law, the police will be held to account. Whether it is uh, holding citizens beyond the stipulated time, but I must be thoroughly clear to you, when police arrest somebody, there is a constitutional timeline which they are allowed by the law to hold that person. 24 hours. That does not amount to an abduction, 24 hours. in my, in my opinion. A case in point is what has just been said here about uh, what happened earlier today. And you guys clearly said in this uh, uh, conference that it was an abduction. I mean, it, it's just clear now that it is not an abduction. This is an arrest. And the police have come forward to say this is the situation we have arrested uh, this person, and it is, it is just good for us to all of us follow the law. And, and I agree with you, the police must act within the law. But let me ask you one question uh, also, Latif. I have never, in this conversation, which is now 20 minutes in, are you guys bothered about the fact that parliament was burnt? Are you guys concerned that millions of businesses, of Kenyans, hardworking Kenyans, we, we are, yes. were, were destroyed? How do you feel? But it all happened. Yeah, how do you feel? It, and it all happened under your watch, Mr. President. No, but that, this, this is at the end of the day, day, this is why we are saying you sought to keep us safe. We must be even. You know, we must be even. The police have a difficult job. They have to make sure. The peaceful demonstrators are protected. But they also must make sure that the criminals 
And, I, and when you say criminals, you know, when I said the other day criminals, many people took offense that I was calling the demonstrators uh, criminals. That's not... Families of the dead, your that, that is not... That, that's a lot of offense. Family of Rex. Rex was killed in a week when the protesters were very peaceful. The first week of this protest were peaceful. We saw protesters carrying... Carrying uh, flags and water bottles. Just water bottles. My, my <laughs> Rex was killed on his way out of work. Yeah, let me, let me, let me. How tell do you feel? You. I mean, let me, let me tell you. When they hear me, you say criminals, I mean, are you are you telling me Rex is the one who broke, uh, who burned Parliament? But Rex died without breaking no, in. No, I'm just telling you. He died. You know, Rex, all. there, are, died there are criminals yeah. who infiltrated and caused mayhem, and in fact. Some of the criminals are actually harmed. They actually harmed the peaceful protesters. Many of the peaceful protesters, they lost phones. They were attacked. In fact, some of the uh, peaceful protesters were attacked by criminals, including a clear example of the one I have, I have, I have explained to you, that they overpowered the police, took the gun from the police, and started shooting innocent people. So we must deal with this situation globally. M Mr. President. I feel for Rex and the mother. This should not happen to any child in Kenya, especially when they are engaged in a peaceful demonstration. Mr. President, the, the concern I've heard from the young people, because I've been speaking to a lot of them, and they said they haven't heard you. In the two statements, actually, there are more now because you have spoken in other settings apart from the two addresses you gave. They haven't heard you address them. They haven't heard you talk to these parents. They haven't heard you acknowledge that there were people who were shot by police in circumstances that did not warrant that. Are you saying you haven't seen anything that bothers you about how police responded to these protests? I am very, and I have, and in my first statement, I clearly said that innocent lives were lost. In my second statement, I said the same. There were innocent lives lost. But also equally, as a person who is responsible, I must think about those who are suffering because they were innocent. But I'm also, I must also be concerned about those who are suffering because criminals cause them immense harm. And, and that is the balance that I need to be able to lead a country. I must protect everybody. I must protect the protesters, and I must be concerned about their lives. I must also uh, protect innocent people who become victims of criminals who take advantage of a peaceful, democratic process that goes on in our do, do you feel that you protected all those people on, uh, in the last couple of days, whether it is people who have businesses, I did whether it is best. parliament, whether it is the people who lost their children? I did, I did my best. If I, if I hadn't done what I did, things would have been much worse. In fact, many people ask me, Mr. President, why did you call in the army? I mean, what choice did I have? I mean, it would have been very reckless of me in the face of the kind of harm people had gone through, the 2019 lives that were already lost, in the face of a burning uh, chief justice office, um, parliament, and, and the rest of it. I mean, it would have been very reckless of me not to mobilize every arm of government and every arm of our security agencies to protect the country and to protect lives. You acted as Commander-in-Chief. You also acted as President, Head of Government, and the person who took the sword and promised to protect the people of Kenya. You chair the National Security Council, which brings in the head of the police, the head of the intelligence, the head of the military, and cabinet secretaries in those doc dockets. Did you have information prior to Tuesday that there was going to be infiltration of the peaceful demonstrations by the criminal elements that you've talked about more than once. And if you did, what did you do about it? We had information, and that is why we prepared in the manner in which we did. If we hadn't prepared in the manner in which we did, we would not be counting 19. We would be counting different numbers. Okay. And I am telling you that the level of mobilization 
by criminals was heavy. In fact, many of the peaceful protesters, many of the young people, very well-meaning young people, left the town by 10, maybe 11, because they realized, and in fact, you could hear them in their, in their, in their, in their zelo. They were saying, guys, we are, this, this, is not our, this is not our group. Let, let us go, let us leave. You could hear them. It, it was in public domain that the peaceful demonstrators all of a sudden realized that the whole thing had metamorphosed into, into, into criminality. So there were criminal and, elements that basically hijacked. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it is Sunday. Mr. President, how many people are in custody on account of this? Those who, you said, they conducted treasonous activities, there were criminal elements, they... Um, you will see them in court tomorrow. How many people are in custody? You will see them in court tomorrow. The police know what I, I, uh, uh, I have a, you know, a, 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 a ballpark uh, brief by the police that they have enough people. They have actually, because in Kenya nowadays, you cannot commit crime and get away with it. Those who attacked parliament are on CCTV. Those who attacked the judiciary are on CCTV. Those who attacked everywhere, those who destroyed people's shops are on CCTV. Many of them are on the run, but we will catch them. Similarly, Your Excellency. Are the funders Similarly, Your Excellency. In, in Similarly. So, so uh, to, to your question, mm. so the police are at it. Because if we don't deal with impunity, we, do, we will not have a country. Now, similarly, Your Excellency, you speak of them, protesters being on CCTV. Not the protesters, yeah. I'm saying the criminals who attacked parliament. Right. Now, every policeman also, without uniform, conducted an abduction. Has also been captured on camera. Those who captured Shad Kiprono were captured on camera. Those who captured Alfred Keter today were captured on camera. Are we going to see action against the killer cops or were they doing what you are saying you had to do to prevent this from being bad? Any killer cop who went beyond what is provided for in the law, will, action will be taken against them. But to your question, are you telling me, Linus, that a police officer becomes only a police officer when they are in uniform? No. Police officers can identify themselves even when they are in civilian. So, and, and, and when a police officer comes to you and says, this is my ID, I am police officer, you are under arrest for the following reasons, that, that, that is legitimate. Uh, you, you cannot uh, tell yes, me that you know, <laughs> because they were in civilian, then it, what they did was wrong. And you know that's not what they do. And that, that's not what they did to Alfred Keter or Shad Kiprono. Were you there? You have the, we have the CCTV footage. You, it's there. It's, I, would, it's, I would suggest, uh, Linus, that we be fair. Mr. And Mr. I have given you my word. Any police officer who does anything beyond the provisions of the law know the consequences. Just as any citizen who also participates in actions that are outside the law, they also know the consequences. Uh, and it is our responsibility to make sure that security agencies act in accordance with the law as as citizens we act in accordance with the law so that we can have a law-abiding, rules-based, uh, rule of law-based country.